Hello, agency owners. It's Charlie here, the host of the Agency Valley podcast, and I just finished recording this episode with Dave Jennings of System Hub. Now, Dave is the guy that originally taught me about systems and had a huge impact on my life and the direction of my business. Now, before I met Dave, like everything was just on me. I was really struggling to contain my business, and I was at a point where if I didn't show up for work, the business stopped, the agency stopped, and And after understanding systems and really taking on board a lot of Dave's advice, I was able to create a business that worked completely separate to me. So to have an agency where you can be separate from it, systems is a bridge you do have to cross at some point. Now, Dave outlines some critical systems that every agency or business must have, which he calls his critical client flow. And then he also leans into how to deal with staff and team when it comes to systems and getting them on board to run the systems for you. So that's enough from me in the intro here. If you do like the episode, please make sure to like and subscribe. And we'd really appreciate it. If you're listening to to us on iTunes right now, please leave us a review. It really helps us reach more agency owners. So into the episode. Hello everyone, it's Charlie here, the host of the Agency Valley podcast and today it's going to be a really fun episode. I'm joined by someone I've known for quite a long time and someone I would call an expert on what we're about to get into today. I want to give a very big warm welcome to Dave Jennings of System Hub and Systemology. How are you doing Dave? Yeah, really well. Thanks for inviting me onto the podcast. Well, thank you for coming. I was like, whew. Hopefully, he's got the time. I know you've been a very busy guy with family, software projects, multiple businesses. Uh, Always got time for you. You always uh, have supported what we've done over the years as well, so at least I could do. Thank you so much. Now, I put out a survey recently to uh, some agency owners, and I wanted to know, like, what was the important stuff to them? Like, what are the things that they want to have more knowledge in or understanding? And overwhelmingly, which you'll be thrilled to hear this, though I was surprised, is I had a number of people reach out and say, look, I want to know more about systems and processes because things are getting a bit out of control here and I'm not really sure how to go about it. Now, I thought you are definitely the man to come on and talk about this stuff because anything I say about systems, I actually got from you. Um, (laughs) So, might as well go straight to uh, the source, so to speak. Yes, well, I mean, the kind words because you've definitely taken a lot of what we originally turned or talked about and, and developed it from there, but it's it's definitely an area that I've been working on personally for a long time, applying it in our own businesses and now helping other businesses apply the same thinking in their businesses. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Dave definitely works on an amazing uh, software system hub, which is obviously related to what we're going to be talking about today. But when I first met Dave, he actually had a quite substantial SEO business and still does which he has successfully systemized. So uh, one of the things I wanted to open up with here, Dave, is could you just tell us a little bit about System Hub and I suppose what it is, how it works and like how agency owners could use it? Mm. So System Hub is a cloud-based platform that stores businesses' standard operating procedures in the cloud. So for an agency, it would be all of your checklists and processes. It's the how-tos. When I think about running an agency, there are really two main software platforms that you need to nail. There's the project management platform, which will look after the who does what by when. And then you use something like System Hub to house the how-tos, the step-by-step. So if you had to invoice someone, uh, what is the process you have for logging into Xero and issuing, issuing out that invoice, just so you can start to share knowledge and transfer around the business. And that's a platform that we developed uh, for our own agency, Melbourne SEO Services. It's been around for about four years now and, and really developed into a tool that, that is the heart of our business. It, it houses, it's the manual for the way that we run our business now. And, and it's what enabled me to remove myself from the operations. Yeah, so, so awesome. And um, I use System Hub personally and really enjoy it. And I think you nailed something there about like it's the companion to your project management um, software. So personally, I'm a big fan of Asana and I love having System Hub with that. And I feel like they go really hand in hand. What's your project management tool of choice at the moment, Dave? 
At the moment, we're using Asana, and then before that, we were using Basecamp. And I've worked with lots of clients in different industries, uh, particularly in agency land. Some people are using Podio, Teamwork PM, Trello. So it really doesn't matter what platform you use, as long as you've got something in place that uh, looks after the who is doing what by when, so you can really get accountability. Because that oftentimes when it comes to systemizing a business, that is a missing piece, the accountability. Like it's one thing to have a how-to document. It's another having someone actually follow it and check it off and have responsibility saying, yes, I've delivered to the standard outlined in the system. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that a lot. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, and I'm even going to lead it in right now, is like, how did you first get into systems? How did you get exposed to this way of thinking and ideology? The first sort of real introduction to it was when I left school, I started learning about the stock market and trading. Basically, when I left school, I, I wanted to make as much money as I could. And I thought the way to do that would be to go learn how to trade the stock market. And one of the first things that I started to learn about was developing a trading plan. And that is very much just a, a step by step. What do you do at certain situations or in certain situations in the stock market? So you might be looking for stocks to exhibit certain criteria and that might be an entry signal. And you might look for stocks to exhibit certain criteria and that would be a reason for you to get out. Um, because once money got involved in um, the stock market and when you're trading, oftentimes people become very emotional. So people develop trading systems as a way to remove that emotion to, to then create consistency because that's really what a trading system is about um, and systems in general. It's about creating consistently. It's steps that can be followed that produce a consistent outcome. So that's where I kind of like first got the idea but then dug into it a lot more. One of my early businesses was owning a rock and roll clothing music store that we were looking to franchise. And we franchised the first store and we brought on our franchisee. And one of the things that we did in that uh, sort of process was capturing exactly how every part of the business was done and developing uh, a manual for the franchisee on how to run that business. So I had some really sort of early introduction and, and training to systems thinking and then obviously explored and developed that over time reading books like e-myth and traction and scaling up and built to sell and th there's a whole range of books that all kind of reinforce the importance of systems um but it, for a lot of business owners it's a very hard topic um and skill to master yet it's so critical for business uh, to succeed and scale yeah, I agree with that one. Um, you know, obviously when we first get into business, or I should say when I first got into business, is like all I was really concerned was with leads and sales. Like that was my priority. It's like, you know, how do I generate a customer, so to speak? And like as you get better at that, you start to realize there's this whole other world. And then as you get further into business, you go, okay, well, actually most of my time needs to be spent on systems and team. Like that's where the perspective starts to shift. Yes, yeah, for sure. I, I really feel like the business owner, where their biggest skill and talent and strengths live is in problem solving because that's what a business owner did to create their business first off. They identified what is a problem that their target audience was having. They felt like that problem wasn't being suitably solved in the marketplace. So they went out and created their product, their service as a solution for that space. Uh, and then they kind of get into the business and they're learning and they're problem solving at every step of the way. Uh, and business owners are great at, at solving these problems. Where they get stuck is they keep saving, um, solving the same problem over and over. And to develop and evolve, really the business owner wants to solve a problem once capture the method of the way that that problem or issue was solved in the business, create a system or process around it so that they can then move on and then start to solve higher, bigger quality problems. Yeah, definitely. I'd never thought about it like that. I think that's actually um, a very helpful perspective for a lot of people because that is the main function in reality is every day we get a set of circumstances or problems or things we've got to look at and we're attempting to build solutions for that. 
And we might just be doing that on repeat ourselves, which is not advised, <laughs> but we're definitely doing it. Yeah, and then you start to, once you solve a lot of the basic problems, uh, whether that's getting leads consistently, converting those leads or onboarding clients, getting those clients a great result, getting them to come back, that's going to be consistent, particularly in an agency for all of the clients that they get on board. So if you can solve that in a systematic way so that it can be delivered without the business owner involved uh, and then start to have your team step up, then the business owner is a bit more free to start to look around at other parts of the business that might be more neglected. So then they might start to look into finance and you know how are wages calculated? How do we make sure our cash flow is solid? Maybe they start to look in HR and they start to look at, you know, what does our recruiting system look like, our onboarding system? Like there are a lot of other components to business and we just want to give the business owner some space so that they can then start to think about what the problems are and either they can solve them personally or they can identify the team member or the consultant or whoever's got the talent that can come in and solve that problem. And then again, it's all about capturing that problem, installing that solution within the business so the business owner can then move on to the next problem. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now, you've actually done something which I think a lot of agency owners aspire to which is, in all honesty, a rarity, and I think you've done this very well, is you've actually built an agency and systemized it to the point where it doesn't need you. Your business is a completely separate entity to yourself, which has freed up time for you to work on things like System Hub. So I wanted to ask, how long did that process take you? And then as a second part is, what do you think the most important systems you got in place in your agency were or are? Mm -mm. The process took, to get the minimum viable systems into place, which we call the critical client flow, that took about nine months. And then beyond that, you know, probably coming up closer to sort of 12 months, we, we started to fill in a few of the other gaps. And, you know, I'm a, a few years into this journey now with having hired a CEO and she runs that. Um, and there's still little bits occasionally that she's kind of getting me to nut out and master, like the operations, HR, finance, um, a lot of the management type of stuff. All of that is incredibly well systemized. And there's a few things now that I'm just going back and putting the finer details on around the marketing because that is an area of um, expertise for me. And, and oftentimes you, you find, you know, it's like the plumber with the leaking pipes. Um, we, she really wanted to tighten up that area. So it's never a process that comes to a conclusion. It, it really is a way of thinking and becomes part of the culture and the way that the business looks at growing and solving problems and just just the way that the team functions. So it, it I suppose realistically for a, a, an agency owner, if they wanted to focus on this and get some good traction, I would say three to six months. Um, if you know exactly what you're doing, you can nail the core parts of the business down, then probably closer to sort of maybe 12 months, um, you would really start to get all of the different departments covered. But then beyond that, it becomes refinement. I've got these three phases uh, of systems uh, introduction that, that I go through. The first one is the critical client flow, and that's all of the systems around how do you get clients? How do you sell those clients, onboard those clients, invoice those clients, deliver for the clients, and then get them to come back? That's the critical client flow. That's phase one. There's probably about 10 to 15 systems there that someone needs to nail first. What, uh, once you get past that, then you move into the second phase of systemization. And that's where you start to think about the other departments and what are the critical systems in those departments. So you're looking at HR that usually covers things like uh, hiring staff, onboarding staff, um, the, the management of that staff. You know, you think about finance, there are certain functions that would happen on a weekly, monthly, quarterly and annual basis. So everything from paying wages to, you know, if you're based in Australia, arranging 
your, your quarterly BAS or, you know, tax obligations, those sorts of things. And it's there's a series of systems in that second phase. Similarly, it's about sort of 15 to 20. And then once you move into the third phase, once you've got what I call the um, the business operating system in place, the boss, once you've got that in place, then the way that you approach it is a bit different. You've you set up a dashboard which enables you to listen to the business. Then you can start to identify when issues and fires arise in the business and then you start to create systems that solve problems. But first you have to get your baseline into place. You've got to make sure you've just got the, the standard level of systems required to function and then you kind of move into that higher level and then it actually depends on the business because at that point um, it will depend on, on a lot of different variables that are going on inside the business. Yeah, there is a, um, I suppose, what we'll call a bit of special snowflake, <laughs> if you will. Like there are some unique characteristics to each business that would have it do it slightly different. But um, I think you've already kind of just led into my next question. But I really believe that critical client flow is probably your masterpiece concept, in all honesty. Um, and I think that's like the essence of where people should start. Um, how did that come to be? The critical client flow started with looking back through my journals and seeing a repeated drawing that I've drawn consistently over the 20 years I've been in business. And it was a way for me to try and visualize what the minimum viable product was for the functioning business and then helped me identify which pieces were missing. So it wasn't until I finally removed myself from our agency and then I made System Hub and Systemology my full-time focus that I then started to think, well, how did I do this? Where can people start? And I, I worked with a range of different business owners to keep finding out what the recurring issues and myths were around systemization because I've never had the discussion with a business owner where they haven't agreed that systems and processes are important it's more that it's just not urgent, they don't find the time to do it, or they don't see themselves as a systems person. And there's a lot of misconceptions around systemization. So the first one that people often have is they think they're going to need to create hundreds of systems to have a big impact. That's most definitely a myth. Uh, between 10 to 15 systems that are central to the business can have a significant impact. So it was about um, how do we identify those? And that's what the critical client flow is about. I thought, well, what's the essence of business? The essence is you need to get a customer. You need to uh, sell that person on your product or service. You need to deliver that product or service, and then you need to get them to come back. So if you can visually map that out at a very high level, you do it on one page, it just gives the business owner so much clarity on what they should be systemizing first. And a lot of people actually get an aha moment just by going through the process because they'll, as they're drawing it, they'll go, I don't really have any consistent ways that I'm generating leads. I don't have anything that's replicable. I'm only relying on one or two channels, or maybe I'm just looking at referrals for my business. And then it's immediately clear and obvious why um, they don't have good lead flow because they don't have any lead generation systems or um, and it's it's different for agencies. Agencies are quite funny because a lot of the agencies are usually quite strong in their marketing, but then quite poor and weak on the operations side of things. Uh, and I have worked with numerous digital agencies that have gone through the systemology process. And as we've gone through it, they they have no trouble selling, but then when it gets to the point of delivery, they don't have an onboarding system. There aren't email templates that they can send out to the client to set the expectations. They haven't properly got their project management software in place where there are a series of steps and how-to documents on how that's done. So what it actually does though at a subconscious level is the business owner or, or oftentimes the salesperson um, in the back of their mind, whether they're aware of it or not, it, they 
they undermine their own selling capabilities because secretly they know if they get more clients, they're not going to be able to deliver to the right standard and things start breaking down in the back end. So it, what someone actually needs to do nine times out of 10, particularly if you own a digital agency, um, a marketing agency is first starting off with getting your operations systemized. Um, get that down and then it actually makes it much easier to ramp up your traffic systems because then you feel confident that you can deliver to a high standard. Dave, I feel like you just stabbed at me so hard. <laughs> that is exactly what it was like at my agency, like to the letter. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it's extremely common. Like that, that without a doubt is the most common thing I see amongst agency owners. I've got to tell a quick story here. This is, um, it's just exactly what you said, but it was um, so interesting. Like uh, many, many years ago when I was very early on in my own agency, um, I was growing. I'd found, you know, something people were interested in. I had a working uh, lead generation system and I was selling things and building, building up my retainer book with no systems. Um, then eventually I got an inquiry from a big company like someone like this is a multi multi million dollar company that said right we want to work with you and do our adwords and facebook ads with you and i got on a call with them and i sold them and i got so excited that i sold them that i did the worst job of onboarding them ever <laughs> um and i mean ever um so I'll give an example is like normally after you like sell someone like you know what's the next thing you generally have to do is like you know maybe send an invoice Yes, some so sort of hand over to accounts or something. Yeah, just didn't just didn't even ask who to send the invoice to. So I had no idea even who to communicate with about um, invoicing. Um, and then you know, if you're in my game, like I needed their logos and access to the website. Um, I did, and of course didn't get that either. Because why would you? Um, and like, what ended up happening is I was repeatedly calling them back, going, "Okay, well now I need this," and then I, of course, didn't ask for the next thing, and then would call them back the next day and go, "Okay, now I need this." And what shined through this experience is they could tell that I was very inexperienced. Mm. They could tell that I wasn't um, very, you know, as professional as they expected. Um, and me repeatedly calling them up to onboard them actually resulted in them getting very, very nervous and turning into that micromanager client where they mm. were like wanting pretty much daily updates. Now, after the first month, things weren't working out, not because we weren't getting results, but because of the time it was costing me in managing the client because I onboarded them so terribly. One of the biggest breakthroughs that an agency owner listening to this could do right now, which would save them a world of pain would be to create a short two to three minute long video that outlines the project sort of timeline and expectations and what's required from the client. If upfront they sent a video that said, hey, welcome aboard, super excited to have you join the agency. What I need from you here is to fill out the questionnaire below. We'll grab the details we need. We'll set you up in our project management software. Give us about a week or two to get your account all set up before we turn on your ads and get things going. Um, in that time, we'll also touch base. We'll need to get some graphics, get you to confirm your creative, uh, and then we should be up and running, you know, and, and the account will be humming towards the end of the month. And then beyond that, we'll check in with you twice a month just to let you know how the project's going. You'll get reports from us once a month. Of course, if you have any questions at any point in time, just shoot us an email, support at yourdomain.com.au. Have that right up front in a video and that just sets the tone for the engagement and s helps to reduce the ongoing micromanagement. We, we did something very similar in um, our uh, video production agency as well because part of the digital agency was we made videos and one of the, the recurring issues we had pop up was when it came to video and we saw it also in um, our web development projects too, the clients, because we were very well systemized and, and we needed to make sure that we kept the project within the scope. So we had very clear rounds of feedback and told the client, you will get one major round of feedback, two minors um, of feedback, 
You'll have a week to get us that feedback. If you're unable to get it to us in that time, we will proceed to the next step. And then if you need additional changes, we'll just charge you at our regular rate. But what that did was it just, it let the client know right up front what to expect. We helped to explain um, by following our systems and our processes, we would meet you know, their on time and on budget expectations. And then if they fell outside of that or they were slow with feedback or they wanted to give us extra, um, that they understood why things kind of went off track. But that, I mean, that's a really easy implementation that, that an agency owner can do to get a big win. I think someone should just pretty much re speak what you just spoke then <laughs> into a camera and they'll. Well, it's funny. It's like because 99% of agency owners won't do this. And it's like, if you are the 1% that do, what an impact that will make in so many ways. The other area then, and it depends on the size of the agency. I mean, it's always hard when you're first getting started and it's you and a couple of part-time contractors. But if if you start to get a bit of traction and you realize maybe, you know, you're not a lover of systems and process, you need to find your right hand man or woman that is the yin to your yang you need if you're a big picture fast acting go out and win the clients as quickly as possible schmooze and network and you know great at your sales and marketing but then you pour on the back end then uh, with the operations and the detail side of things and following through and systems and processes then that should be something that um, you find someone to compliment you because you really can't build a business that works without you, that is profitable, that scales. You can't build a team that scales without this. Like this is fundamental for business. Such an interesting point. I think we're going to have to dive deeper into this part though because um, I'll, I'll be real. Like I struggled to do my systems originally. Like this was like um, forced feeding we're going to go with. It's like I knew it was so important and I hated every minute of it in the beginning. Um, but the results and what I got from it, it got me to enjoy it more. But then in future businesses, I've always gone with, I suppose, more of this approach of hiring someone um, or having someone on the team who could contribute and it is a hundred times easier. Yeah, I think um, definitely at the start, it's what makes it hard is the business owner is looking for the immediate result. And the impact of systems aren't necessarily felt immediately and the positive impact actually compounds over time. So one system, you might not get too much of a blip on a radar, but start implementing 10, 15 systems, get your critical client flow into place, and then it will revolutionize your business. But you kind of have to hold your breath through that period and there's a little bit of an element of faith and trust but deep down the, the business owner knows like that's what i always find most interesting oftentimes i'll have discussion with business owners and they know this is what they need to do but for whatever reason they they resist it they find other things they deprioritize it they you know maybe it's just because they don't like it what, whatever it is that they find a reason not necessarily to address it. So, I mean, if if you really struggle and you can't go head on with it, then you, you've just got to find another way around it. But at some point, you have to cross this bridge. I think everyone is inherently aware. And as you said earlier, it's like you, if you asked any business owner if they thought systems are a bad idea, I don't think anyone would say, yeah, they're a terrible idea. Don't do that. We all know this thing. We want to pretend it doesn't apply to us, but we know it. And um, I think you said something really interesting there about like the impact of systems and it can be delayed and there's a compound effect. But um, my, my experience was actually very opposite. Um, I had, we had a very quick effect with systems. So the first system I actually built out was a system for managing an AdWords account. The issue I was facing in uh, my agency very early on at the time, this is many years ago, is that myself and one of my team were managing AdWords accounts. And we were managing them very differently to the point where we could, I suppose, do work twice or both work on the accounts in different ways and get different results. And like the consistency of things um, saw us taking, I suppose, more time than was really required on these accounts. Now, it took me about three days to build the first system. There was a lot of back and forth discussion with me and this team member about how we should manage an account. But once we agreed, the impact was almost instantaneous. Like mm. across those um, 
that month is like we noticed that we were substantially more efficient in our accounts and we're actually able to take on more work. So it was like a huge drive. And it depends on where the business is at. The, the difference that you had right there was that you had another specialist who works on the tools, whereas a lot of when they're smaller business owners and they're getting started, they're still the main person on the tools. So what they end up systemizing oftentimes is everything around the operations, which then frees them up and then that's why i was saying you need that cumulative effect so it does depend on where you're at if you've got a a skilled team member who can take a large chunk of your work that is you know repeating doing the work then you'll see an instant impact that's a really important distinction dave i really like that so there is obviously an instant um application then, but I, I tend to agree that for the majority of systems and people, it will be more delayed as you've kind of referenced to right there. Mm. But I want to dig into another, I want to go deeper a little bit here, because this is one of the questions I got when um, I put this out to uh, the community it was like, in the example of doing systems with team, um, something that I get quite commonly is that how do you deal with resistance from team members with systems? So this is either uh, team members who don't want to follow the system or team members that are resistant to having systems in a business? Mm. The biggest resistance that you will get is from existing team members. So it's all of that legacy thinking that they've, you know, worked up until this point and they haven't needed systems. Why do I need systems now? Oftentimes they'll jump to the conclusion that, hey, is he or she looking to replace me? Are they looking for, you know, more transparency? Sometimes team members will create a black box around what they're doing for job security. So there can be a lot of different reasons. You you have to understand what is the um, cause of that resistance and then you need to see if you can meet that head on or help them to understand what is the benefit to them. They're in their position, they're getting paid a wage or salary and they're used to doing things a certain way and oftentimes they're used to the business owner coming up with these harebrained ideas and throwing ideas left, right and centre, some that they run with for a week and forget about and then they move on to the next thing. So they've, they've had all of this whiplash and here we are coming in and suggesting a significant change. I'm already busy enough as it is, you know, now you're going to try and lump this idea of creating systems on me as well. So there's a whole lot of different things that can cause resistance. The one thing that I will say is once you get this into place, um, for any new team members, this becomes a non-issue because this is the way that you do business. We are a systemized business who has a, a culture of systems thinking. We always look for the systems solution. We have documented systems and processes that work hand in hand with our project management. If you don't think that you can operate in this framework, then you're not a good fit for our business and we won't hire you in the first place. So automatically, when you start to build a, a systemized approach, even for recruitment, um, team members will then start to get a feeling for your systemization before they even have the interview or get onboarded. Uh, and and that means you'll start to attract the right people in. So then with that in mind, if we don't have to worry about new clients or new team members that are coming on board, then it just comes back to addressing uh, the existing team members. So there's a couple of ways that that can be done. You have to think about um, firstly helping them to understand the benefits to them. So when people go away on holidays and they – have to keep working while they're on holidays or team members come back and they've got an inbox filled with a hundred emails because nothing has been done while they've been gone. Like no one likes that. So the systemization can help them go on holidays and help things keep moving. It can also help team members who want to move up in their uh, organization because if, if someone is able to document, systemize their role and then delegate that to lower cost labor, that instantly, inst instantaneously makes them more valuable and means that they can move on to other higher level duties, which make them more valuable to the business owner. So um, if you can help them understand that there's real benefit to them for doing this, and then 
why it needs to be for the business as well. So you help to understand from their position, you let them know we're looking to grow a business here. We need to get these systems and processes in place. This is just what we have to do. And then get their buy-in on that early in the piece. Get them to work through the critical client flow with you. So you, you take them through the process so they're involved and then you make it as easy as possible for them to document. So um, documentation is actually a two-person role. There's the person with the knowledge and then this person who does the documentation. So if you can make the knowledgeable person just make a recording of them doing what they're already doing, but they don't have to worry about documentation, again, that reduces some of the friction uh, and the resistance because now they're not necessarily the ones having to do the documentation. And that, again, starts to get you some wins. And then towards the end of this, you will find some people still won't be the right fit. And and just like a business owner, the business owner um, that was required to grow the business up until now and this point that it's at isn't always the same business owner who, who will grow it through to that next level. You need to evolve and change. You might have micromanaged and been across everything to this point, but now to move through to that next level, you have to let go and let your team step up. So you have to evolve. Now, not everybody is comfortable with evolving. Some business owners get stuck, um, just like team members get stuck. And, and if you go through this process and find they're not the right fit for you, you'll actually find some of them start to self-select themselves out. And it becomes obvious that they're not a good fit for the organization. And then it just becomes time to find the right people who will get on board with the mission and who will drive forward what you're looking to do. So, I mean, there's quite a bit there, but a few ideas maybe to get someone started. I've absolutely got this to sack your staff, start again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't. Um, but I tend to agree. I think you, the big one uh, that I experienced myself and also agree with is if you get buy-in from the team, like get them involved in the systemization experience and they own a part of it, that makes all the difference. If you're handing someone, the, this is how we do things now, um, I almost, you, you have to kind of expect some resistance. Yes. Because you're putting up resistance. Yeah. Everybody's busy. Like business owners are busy and they might get the bug or get bitten by the bug of this idea of systemization. And now they want to systemize after listening to this podcast. And then they'll go back to their team members and say, oh, I want you to do the systems. But your team members are busy too. Um, and the idea, not everybody resonates with creating systems and documentation. So you get the right people, get the, their buy-in, make it easy for them. If you make it easy for them, that just becomes much, I mean, that's the whole premise behind System Hub. Um, there's a lot of friction to creating a Dropbox folder and setting up different folders, creating Word documents in those and not having them formatted consistently and makes it hard to find and security permissions and like all of this stuff, friction is the enemy and complexity is the enemy of systems. So, so the aim of the game is actually simplification. If you can simplify your business, you, you, everything starts to move easier. Yeah, I agree a lot there. Now, Dave, we have coming up to our time here and that was a beautiful segue into where's like obviously we can't talk about everything about systems on this one episode. So we might have to get you back on for another episode. But for in between those moments, where can people go to learn more about System Hub and systems and what you do? So the two main areas I work on these days is uh, System Hub, which is the software that we talked about. So that's just systemhub.com. And then systemology is actually the thinking. So we've I've developed a, a process to extract business owners from the operations of their business. It's a process they go through. We call it systemology, and you can see that at systemology.com. There's loads of free info. Just scroll down to the footer, look for the YouTube channel, um, You know, download the system for creating systems, and just start consuming the info. If you've got questions, you can get me on Twitter or go through the contact page, and I'll, I'll do my best to help, or at the very least, I can point you in the right direction. Uh, thank you so much, Dave. And guys, we will link to both System Hub and Systemology in the show notes. So wherever you are listening to this podcast, if you check the description, you can click through right away. Dave, thank you so much for coming on and just sharing so many important things with us today. This is the end of our episode. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me.